Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Diary of a Trader. Today's video is going to be on how to calculate stop losses. Uh, stop losses are, are probably, and profit targets, actually one of the things that a lot of uh, people struggle with um, as far as identifying where should a stop be, what should my profit target be, um, how far is too far, how is, is this enough of a range or not. Um, Ultimately, I mean, depending on your your time frame, depending on your trade style, uh, those things are going to have a lot of uh, uh, influence on what your targets for stops and profits are going to be. But we're going to focus on stop targets. And I think, you know, there's when you're using a system or if you're using a different chart style, that there's a lot of different ways that you can, uh, you know, measure out where those those stops should be. So. One of my favorite uh, time, price, and volume-based uh, uh, charting styles is Ichimoku analysis. Now, with Ichimoku analysis, you've got a, a whole bunch of different variables that you can pick from as far as identifying a stop. Um, you know, and, and depending on what trade uh, entry system you are using within the Ichimoku system, that's going to play a role in determining your stop as well. For instance, if I am looking at the hourly chart below, and if I'm, you know, if I'm saying to myself, okay, well, I'm going to go long once the lagging span and price are both cross above this high, all right? Because um, because I want the lay, I want the lagging span to be an open space, meaning that it won't run into any of these candlesticks over the next five to ten periods. But if we close above this prior swing high in the Kiwi dollar, then that is an open space. And that, that tells me that I have a pretty expansive uh, a range above me with very little resistance. And that can be confirmed here on the four hour chart as well, because the four hour chart, that would also be a very, very bullish condition if price were to do that. Now, where would my stop be on the Ichimoku system? There's a couple of ways that you can do this. And if you're looking at the hourly chart, and even if you're looking at the four hour chart and even the daily chart, if you're gonna do a breakout system, if you're gonna do the ideal Ichimoku breakout uh, a system within that within Ichimoku, then your stop is going to be a few pips below the bottom of the cloud. I usually give it, um, for things like the, the Kiwi dollar, the pound, the Euro dollar, I give it a five to 10 pip range below the cloud as where my stop would be. So it would look it would look like this to kind of visualize it. If I was going to go long right up here, if we get a close above that high, my stop is down here. All right, where am I at? That's at 65.84, and this is 65.74. So about a 10 pip stop below the cloud. That's where my stop would be. My profit target would. We'll talk about profit targets in the next video, but that's where my stop target would be. Additionally, on the right side of this bottom chart here. You can see that there's the uh, volume profile. The volume profile can help confirm where a stop can be, especially if you're going to use it like a like a visual range. Um, you know, the next high volume node below here is definitely well below that level that we're currently at. But you could say, you know, if if you want to kind of combine uh, the ranges, then you could even drop it a little lower the stop. But if you're going to use strictly Ichimoku measurements, five to 10 pips below the bottom of the cloud, that is generally where you would put the stop. If you were shorting, uh, you would put, you would just do the inverse, you'd do five to 10 pips above the cloud. Now there's, uh, there's an easier way of this, I think, with point figure charts. Point figure charts, uh, I love them because they're very, they're, they're very much, they're, they're an unambiguous chart form. They're very scientific and logical. Uh, there, it's a very, very like black and white setup. <laughs> there is no, there's no room for a lot of interpretation on the trader, traders or analysts uh, part here. And for some people, they you like that, and for others, you don't. I think, I, I think from an analysis standpoint, for people who are primary analysts, things like candlestick charts and all that, fantastic chart platforms and chart styles for analysis. For trading though, and because trading is such a emotional and psychological gig, 
you want to do things that are going to cause you the least amount of freak out. Uh, 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 less freak out stimuli, the better trader you get. And point figure charts, they are so boring <laughs> that they, they really keep you from getting excited or upset. The other thing is, is that the, 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 the chart style itself is like a system itself. And so depending on where you're trading, if you're on the long or the short side of the market, you know, pretty standard is the uh, pretty standard stop is the three is whatever the reversal amount is. So this is a 20 pip three box reversal chart. And so if I was, you know, looking at this chart here, if I said, OK, I'm going to take my short uh, once it breaks this double bottom. You know, where would my stop be? My stop would be where the wherever the first uh, X column would show up. So that was my entry. My stop would be right up there at tw if my entry was at um, at one twenty. What is that? One twenty six forty. My stop would be at one twenty seven even. All right. Three box reversal, twenty pips each. That's sixty pips. That would be my stop. You can be a little bit bit more, bit more uh, adventurous, and you 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 know depending on where the breakout is at, you could say you're going to put your stop below the, the one box below the prior O column, or if you're short, you could say I'm going to take if I go short here, you know then my stop is going to be you know one box above the prior X column. So on, on, on things like point and figure charts, it's very, very easy to establish where that uh, where that stop should be at. Additionally, you know, if you're actively managing trades in point and figure on a on a uh, on a smaller, uh, I don't want to say faster because time is not used in point and figure. But if you're going to use like a uh, uh, like a faster trading uh, setup with with a point and figure, like if you're going to decrease the box size to like a, a, like a two box reversal chart if we're going to de decrease the uh, or the reversal amount to two box or if you're going to take it from 20 pips to like five pips then you're going to want to uh, kind of you know change up the range of where that stops going to be but on a three box reversal point figure chart which is the only the only one that I use there's a lot of uh, options out here um, that uh, that you have um, and even just you know, a, almost like a, a virtual trailing stop of that three box reversal, which is 60 pips. You know, that that's a I, I pretty much keep that the standard in my own own trade and own trading. I just keep that 60 box, uh, 60 uh, uh, pip uh, reversal and kind of trail it along. So that's e that's easy to do. But again, rehash this using point and figure charts. Your, your stop on an entry is always going to be at the minimum, at, it will, yeah, at the minimum 60 pips. And in fact, if you want to be really conservative about it, like, like, like I do, I, I do 60 pips, okay? Three box reversal, if it gets tagged, it gets tagged, but point figure charts minimize your losses to a minimum, at, but it should be the max of whatever that reversal amount is. And going back to our Ichimoku charts, if we're, you know, if we if we uh, took a short entry somewhere around here on the euro at uh, like 111.07, um, our stop is five to ten pips above the top of the cloud, and that that's how we do a stop on the Ichimoku system. So those are just a couple options uh, using two different chart chart styles uh, that can help you identify where the stop is. The ultimate point though for a stop is that once you set it, you don't move it further away. You can move it closer to your price but you don't ever move it further away. The stop is there for a reason and don't get upset if it gets hit, okay? If it gets hit, it's supposed to be hit for a reason, okay? Um, you gotta get used to, you gotta get used to your stops being hit, but otherwise uh, that it concludes this video and I look forward to speaking with you in our future videos.